All right, everyone, welcome to another Jan Jack Machado No Gi Required. Today, I have here a special guest to me because he's someone that I know probably over 20 years. She is one of my black belts in Jiu Jitsu, Felicia O. And I have a lot of questions that you don't know the questions. <laughs> That's the good part. But I want to introduce you like number six and let's say in the Dirty Dozen, you are one of the female pioneers in Jiu-Jitsu in America. I'm sure you know that, but I will remind you that you became an inspiration for a lot of women in this country and a lot of women in Jiu-Jitsu because it sounds like there is always more challenge especially in the martial arts world, specific jiu-jitsu, for women to succeed. And I think the time that you start training jiu-jitsu, start competing, it was a little different than today. I think the amount of women you have involved in the sport today, thankfully to you, to face in the beginning so many challenges. That's something that I'm going to ask about the moment you started, the whole evolution, how you see the sport 20 years ago as is today. Also, for what I know, and I wanted to make sure I pronounce correctly, you are an artist, which end up also doing the art of jiu-jitsu. And can you say correctly the art? Uh, flow. Flow. And does jiu-jitsu has any influence in that art that you do or the art that you do also has any influence in your jiu-jitsu? I think they both come together in a very strange way. I mean, I started art well before martial arts and kind of went away from that and ended up back through martial arts going back to art 20 years, 20 something years later. And I want to point out and make sure that right here next to me, it's one of the gifts that I have from her. As you can see, it's a high level quality in terms of art. It's very beautiful. Thank you for that gift, Felicia. And as you can see right here. And I think it's knowing you all this time and uh, remember your first day training class with us in Jiu Jitsu. The question is, without all this social media that we have today, how did you end up in a jiu-jitsu school? Well, I um, did other sports and I was rock climbing at the time. And one of the women I rock climbed with um, invited me to go on a, a hiking trip up to Mount Whitney. And it was with her and her husband because their friends weren't able to go. and. On the drive up, her husband's name is Mike, Mike Riddell. Oh, big Mike. And he is a, a, a smaller guy, and he was telling me about this thing that he did called Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and how it was about uh, skill and technique versus size and strength. And uh, I really had no interest in it. Um, and we got up to Lone Pine and we get to the motel and we, we have to sleep there one night before we go up early in the morning. And he at the time was a blue belt. And as you know, blue belts can get very excited about wanting to share jujitsu with everybody. And so we're at the hotel, at the motel and I'm hanging out with them in their room and he starts showing me the positions of jujitsu on the bed. And I... I have only met him once, I think, before that. I really just knew her, and I thought, mm, this is a little weird. I mean, he's showing me guard and mount on the bed, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she's just standing there kind of laughing, and they had gone on the Gra Gra Gracie cruise before, and then after that, she's like, I'm done with that. I, you know, that's your thing, Mike. I'm not going to do that sport. And so she's just kind of laughing at me, and I'm feeling a little awkward because I don't really know him. Uh, and then that was about it. And so the next day we get up, we go on this hike that turns into a nightmare. 
Um, a storm came in. We never made it to the top. We almost died. It was, it was pretty bad. And Unforgettable moment. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was definitely life changing. Um, so I probably won't really go hiking up there again. So don't invite me, anybody. Um, so when we came down um, a couple of days later, uh, they, they were not very happy, and we're just driving back. And I thought, hmm. Earlier in the year, I had done the LA Marathon because I wanted to do something in uh, the year 2000, the Y2K thing, and I wanted to get a medal. So I did the marathon, and that had turned into a, a weather nightmare as well. So I thought, mm, what was this thing, Mike? That, what is this thing you're talking about? Because, Sounds like Jiu Jitsu saved you. Well, it was, it was indoors. <laughs> it was indoors, and um, you know, little did I know it was a padded room. So that seemed to be a much safer, more appropriate choice for me. So um, I think we came back a Sunday, and I think I came. I don't know if it was Monday or Tuesday, but I I just said, where is that? And I lived in West LA at the time, so I drew drove over, and. Lucky for me, I ended up at an academy, John Jack Machado Academy, um, that unbeknownst to me at that time was really a perfect fit for who I was and my style of learning and your style of teaching. And, and we're talking about 2000, 20 years ago. Uh, November 2000. What was your first impression stepping on the mat and just see guys? That didn't really occur to me. I, I know I, I came one day and I watched, and then I came back the next day. And it's like, okay, I'll, I'll come try it. And I remember filling out the form. And, and literally, I knew nothing about jujitsu or martial arts really too much. I mean, I knew who Bruce Lee was, but not that hadn't really done anything. And I remember filling out the application form. And it, one of the questions is, Do you want to earn a black belt? And I'm thinking, duh, like, like who does martial arts and not want a black belt? I had no idea how long it took. I what it entailed nothing. And so the next day, I, I I came back and I did a class. And I remember it was the beginning class that was a little bit later that Silverado taught, or maybe I don't remember if it was you or Silverado in my first class. But I remember I went to the beginning class, and Mike used to take the advanced class, and he stayed. And was my partner, and so I felt quite comfortable. And then he never came back to that class again. And so I don't know. I just kept coming. And as I, when I signed up, you know, you sign a contract, and so I I took both of your classes, and then just kind of adjusted my schedule. And to me, I'm in, I'm like paying for this. So then I just was like, okay, I come on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and that's part of my schedule of what I do. Um, so there was never this option of, do I want to go to class? It was like, it just became part of my life very, very early on. Um, probably just because I felt like I was paying for it. I might as well go take a class. It became part of your routine. Mm. And here we yeah. are, 20 years of stories in Jiu-Jitsu on and off the mat. What was it like for you, Felicia? I mean, I, I because I was there. I remember when you joined. I don't remember the exact day, but... I always reflect back because it was such a different time. Yeah. The academy was, I mean, it was, it was hard enough for men. Yeah. And you're this female and we didn't have any at that time and navigating that world. And, and I mean, you did it so stoically. I, I don't remember too much of you. You were just there. Like you said, you just there, you worked hard, but what was, what was going on internally? Um, you know, it, I think, Uh, it might have been the second class or third class where I, I remember I was in someone's guard and it was kind of like, oh, this is kind of weird a little bit. But then I just kind of put the blinders on because the objective of being here was to learn jujitsu. And um, I didn't really process so much or get into the fact that I was the only female here. Um, most of my work and at the time you know a lot of the worlds I was involved in were male dominated so it never really um became an issue for me and I was here to learn jiu-jitsu so you know that's what I'm here to do do you remember your first competition did you um, ever imagine signing up in a jiu-jitsu school you will actually compete into the sport yes yeah, so it was six months into training and I 
what, what I would remember, I went to your class and I went to Silverado's class. And I ended up choosing the nights that Silverado was teaching because, <laughs> I don't think I've told you this, um, at the end of class, Silverado used to go around the room and make, everyone would say an exercise and then we would do 20 of them or whatever. So you'd say squat thrusts and we'd do 20 of them and someone would say push-ups. And at the time, you know, I was always into sports and doing jujitsu. I had no idea what I was doing and I'm just flailing around. And I felt after Silverado's class with the conditioning stuff he did at the end, I was getting a better workout because again, I didn't know what I was doing. You thought jujitsu was the only workout. <laughs> so I went to that and I remember after like, I think it was about five, five and a half months in, uh, you, you were doing most of the tournaments at the time in LA. Uh, it was the yeah, grappling yeah, games that, tournaments. I think we, st we started the jujitsu tournaments. I think the first one we did at the, uh, Police Academy, not sure which year, We're talking about early 2000s or, and it was very interesting, but the amazing thing is to me was be able to watch the growth. It's like a movie. I'm watching you in the beginning, like baby steps and suddenly engage into one competition, then start to understand what, what Jiu Jitsu actually is, feeling that impact on your life and suddenly pursuing more and more. And for a lot of people that you hear Felicia for the first time here, she accomplished so much in Jiu-Jitsu. She became an American champion. She became world champion with Gi, no Gi. Uh, I'm still today debating myself and I'm sometimes upset in a good way with her because she would have took the second place on ADCC, which she could take the first place, but I'm proud in a way because she wants to win the fight by submission. That means looking back to the day you started and have so many competitions and achievements on your back, what would you say today to a little girl that wants to start training Jiu-Jitsu? What she should be looking or how she should be looking towards jiu-jitsu, what advice you would give to a little girl, an adult, why are you doing jiu-jitsu, and what, it, what do you see is the benefit of that in your life? I think uh, with anybody, I think it just gives you so, so much of a different sense of yourself and so much more confidence, um, whether they're children or adults, uh, men or women. Um, I, I don't feel that I didn't have that confidence before I started jujitsu, but jujitsu definitely changed the confidence of me and who I was and being in the world. Um, I, I know sometimes people have this mis mistaken idea that, oh, you can do anything, you know, because you're a jujitsu black belt. It's like, well, no, I can't. You know, if someone attacks me, you know, if they have a weapon, that's a different situation. But in terms of how you feel and present yourself, um, I think you just have a very different sense of confidence in who you are. So you do walk around with your head up. And even if it's down, because it's that a day where you're down, you still have a different sense of how you carry yourself. And I think people sense that. And I especially, especially as a woman, I think people sense that is to me it had so many impact on my personal life my life outside the mat did you feel any change in terms of accomplish all the things that you want to do besides jiu-jitsu in your life because i i remember when i met you i did not know you are this incredible artist mm -hmm. that you create things and if i'm not wrong I saw that happening years later after engaging in jiu-jitsu. Does jiu-jitsu had impact on you to say, do you know what? I stopped doing something that I love to do because you do very well, all your artistic, the ideas that you have. Did you feel a little more encouragement to go and pursue that artistic side 
that you stop for a little while? I think that definitely learning jiu-jitsu and engaging in it every day helps you deal with life. So, um, and as I have gotten older and had different experiences, um, I think we, um, we realize, you know, you can have all the plans. You can decide, you know, when I go into class, I want to work on triangles today. And you can have the intention to do that, which is, I think it's very important to have that intention. But guess what? you're on the bottom of side control every day and you're not getting the triangle or you're finding yourself in someone's guard and you're not getting the triangle. And so you deal with whatever comes up. And I think being able to deal with the present of what's going on, having plans, but also being willing to adjust that. And uh, the further, the more I train jujitsu, the more fun that becomes. And I think transferring that into life where you have your plans of what you want to do And life doesn't do that, you know, like you can try to control everything. And the more you try to control it, the more difficult it becomes. And I think that happens in jujitsu too. It's like sometimes the more you want something so bad, it's like, oh, now I'm in a really bad position and I should have let go a little sooner, adjusted to what was going on, whatever the other things that life or this role is bringing me and take advantage of that and use that to your advantage uh, to move forward with your life. Flow flow there you go yeah so my actually my my initials felicia linda o are flow and so then i changed the acronym to for love art utility see that we don't know sometimes we get lost if i found jiu-jitsu or jiu-jitsu found me and i think the interesting thing to me too is starting practicing jiu-jitsu you did your first tournament when did you realize that you want to become a champion and consequently a world champion. When did that actually start, that fire start inside of you? I don't know that it was ever that idea so far ahead. To me, it was, I just want to get better. And, um, Having done my first tournament at, at your uh, event, six months in, competition just became part of my training. And um, it was always what's next, what's next. Uh, you know, in, in the sense that I've always just kind of looked like one or two steps ahead of me. I never looked far, far in the future because there wasn't much future for women especially. So I remember when I started jiu-jitsu, I guess a few months after I started was when you went to Abu Dhabi and I didn't really know what that was. And I was just so clueless about everything. But then I started reading, started learning about what that was and it never occurred to me, oh, they don't have women or maybe they will have women. It wasn't on the radar. It was just, what am I going to do? Like, what's the next tournament coming up? I want to go do that. Okay, what's next? I want to do that. And then it happened. Just for some people to have an idea. And you would do that better than me. Just tell, if you remember all of them, but if if you don't, because there's so many, feel off the titles that you have. We only have an hour, so as a as a competitor in Jiu Jitsu, because 2020 she is ranking number one in the IBJJ with gi and no gi. Did you ever, man, because you, you, you got to see too, because Felicia, the way I see is one, just because you're female, you become an inspiration for all female athletes. No. No. You become an inspiration for everybody. Because we all go through the same thing, regardless of being a man or women. And I think is, I just want people to, to hear a little bit about the titles that you already have. And you have titles in every single belt in Jiu-Jitsu, blue belt, purple belt, brown belt, black belt, and continue to do so because recently you just fought and again won another world champion, another Pan Am. How many Pan American championships you have? I'm not sure. <laughs> See, I know it's more than three. Uh, uh, I think it's four. How many world titles you have? A few. I, I, see, I, I know she's very, 
she's just such a nice person that, and in a way, I wanted to. But this is the reality. You became an icon. That mean, your name is in in this history of the sport. Ten years from now, people go back in history, see in the beginning of jiu-jitsu, this step by step of Felicia who did uh, in a very challenged time. I know it wasn't as big sport as it was in the beginning. I know it was feeling that was more challenge for the girls than the boys. But regardless of that, you kept going, continue this, to do so. And I can say today, you wrote your name in the history of jiu-jitsu. And in America here, you were one of the first ones. You were one of the girls that opened, not a door, I see a gate. Because mm. how many women start flocking into jiu-jitsu after seeing some of the women I had doing so well? And you definitely became an inspiration for so many people. And here in my school, and uh, I have some of the stories with her, we have some people that came in for tri class, first class. And I'm not sure she was, I don't know, blue belt, purple belt, and all belts. She was my invitation card to all the new students. And I remember <laughs> having some of the new guys, hey, you, you can go and grab with her. Because some of the guys, they don't want to, you to show technique. They just want to try. Mm. And they have wrestling background, karate, all backgrounds. They just want to try. <laughs> then I have Felicia going with, and she just go and choke the person here, I'm by the person there. And the guy finishes and say, hey, where do I sign up? Because she's not a very big person. She just dominate me in the training. And I don't want to even go with the guys. She already did that. I'm in. You became actually a good business for my school because everyone that comes in, oh, go with her. And I think he proved the technique, but um, it was like a, incredible to see all this evolution and still be, you come almost every class in training for all, all the guys, all the girls in my school are inspired by you. They want to be like you. They want to have jiu-jitsu as good as yours. And I see that you look down and you kind of uh, taking care, making sure they're all going to get there. But it, but it is interesting to point out, I think it's really important, when you, today, a lot of people know who you are, they come in, um, but back then, you know, it, it goes without reason, and correct me if I'm wrong, you got your black belt in like four and a half years? Yeah. Yeah, see, I mean, we all know how hard it is to get a, a belt, much less black belt. But what you did, you were the person that we would all point to because inevitably, and it happens to today, people will struggle and what is it going to take to get to the next level, whatever the case may be. And you will explain to them, these are the steps you need to take. But, you know, again, it kind of, kind of goes in one ear and out the other. You know, it's, you'll give them the advice, they don't always follow it, but with you, is you kept going through the ranks so fast, but you had the work ethic to back it up. And we would always tell people that if you really want to know how to get better, talk to Felicia because her work, she's just in here all the time training and competing. And we've always stressed that, that you don't have to compete, but competition, what a, what an adrenaline shot for your development. But in order to compete, you have to work even harder. And it just, it goes without saying. So to tell somebody that, it makes sense, but to have somebody on the floor doing the work, you were that example. And we would always, I know I would, I would just say, you want to you wanna know what it takes to get better? Talk to her. Because I remember, I mean, the, the, the rise, that the, the success that you achieved didn't come simply because you showed up. You just, you worked so much harder than, than most of your, most of us, you know, because to, to compete requires extra sacrifice and you put it in day in and day out. And, and what people don't realize sometimes is the time frame. You got to understand that for many years, she used to train <laughs> twice a day. I mean, in one week that we have six days of jiu-jitsu, she trains in the mornings and in the evening. 
what average people train in one year, she used to do that in four months. That's why she was able to, in a very fast pace, discipline and dedication and you and you're showing the results out there. You were a, you were a pro athlete before there was professionalism in jujitsu. That's what it really boiled down to. Yeah. You know, it was just it was a full time thing for you. Even though you had a career, you made this, you know, part of it. For you, um, what was your favorite victory out there in all your competition years? If is you have one favorite or maybe two or maybe three or maybe all of them, is there anyone that stands out for you? Uh, I, I think obviously the, the match with Megumi Fuji, um, that was the semifinal at ADCC. Everyone thinks it was the final, but I, I, I have to tell you the two years before I was sent to Japan and, uh, the promoter brought me over to Japan and I was supposed to fight another girl. It was a gi match. And the idea was that I win that match and then they could set up a fight with me and Megumi, except that I went to Japan and lost. And so the next year they brought me back again for this no gi tournament. And again, I didn't do as well as projected, so they couldn't really set up that match. Then ADCC happens and organically the match happened in the semifinal and I won by submission. Um, so that I definitely think was by far the, the most incredible memory because of all the failure all, that had gone into all the it. history behind. It's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And then the, the number two one was when I competed for the Fila grappling team, um, for the United States. And, uh, it was not necessarily the most competitive in terms of levels. That was the one in Norway. I think. It was the year, the first year they had it. Fila took over grappling, and it was supposed to become an Olympic sport. It didn't end up happening through them, but that was in Turkey, and that stands out to me because, uh, you know, before that I was never, and you know, it's kind of a political time right now. But to me, the 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 whole idea of being an American was not that much of a part of my consciousness. But at this time, it was 2007, we went over there, and um, as a kid, I grew up watching Nadia doing gymnastics, and there was always this idea of this dream of representing your country and being a great person in your sport. And as you get older, you start to leave those dreams behind, and you grow up and get a job. And... Um, I remember when we went there and I won that tournament and it was the most similar to an, a situation like the Olympics where you were representing your country. They had a podium, they raised the flags and played the national anthem. And that kind of changed my understanding um, and uh, of being from this country, growing up here, being born here and, and, having some and, connection to that. And I think that's incredible. And I think I believe everybody should be proud. If you're an American, you have to be super proud to be an American. If you are from any other country, you have to be proud. But what you say, it's it's funny because through the jiu-jitsu world, you were able to fulfill a dream. Yeah. An image that you have as a kid and suddenly you are in that dream that you had. And this is incredible. Yes, I, I cried on the stand. <laughs> it was pretty am amazing. Yeah. And and for people to get an idea out there, I mean, it's it's a lot of stories on Felicia's career in terms of achieving so many moments. Is there any story that you can tell, like funny thing that happened in a tournament and related to jiu-jitsu? In a tournament? tournament on a seminar oh. or anything that just like oh my god I can't believe I'm this uh, is happening uh I I remember one time at the old academy I f I don't remember if it was before or after a tournament but um maybe I was a purple or a brown belt and I don't know that I was quite as comfortable in 
my jujitsu skin. And I remember you were saying something. I don't know if it was your uh, Felicia's about to go compete in this tournament or she had just come back from a tournament. And I was on the other side of the wall, not on the mat. And at that time, you know, it was just blinders, just train, train, train. And it wasn't about anything else but jujitsu, you know. And I always feel like you have to do jujitsu for yourself. You can't do it because you want to win this thing or you want to impress this person because it's just too hard. It's too much blood, too much sweat, too much tears. And I don't even remember this. And I was, again, not very comfortable in myself. And you started uh, talking about me and I ducked behind the wall. Um, like, like it was like a, a cartoon or some sitcom. And I, I couldn't believe like I actually just did this, but I, I just had to drop down to hide. And then later after you're done talking, I came crawling back around. So that, that was like a really weird <laughs> memory <laughs> that I just hid. But I think it, <laughs> it, it, it's one of the things that I use in classes that when I notice some of the students are shy, it's to slowly bring them into the spotlight until they get used to and no longer be shy because it's something that might hurt you in your life alone. And I want to make sure in Jiu-Jitsu we have so many opportunities as instructor to make sure that because all of my black belts today, I remember they were very shy. Hey, can you teach the class today? People leave the school. No, no, not today. I'm not feeling good. <laughs> and even some people to hear their voice. I said, man, I didn't know you can talk because... And I think uh, I use jujitsu as an excuse to bring people out a little more because what we basically do is just become through jujitsu as a normal person, the way we should be. And I think our tool today as instructor is to bring all those things out. Let me ask you this too is looking back today is what actually actually jiu-jitsu means to you what is actually how much part of your life and percentage jiu-jitsu takes into you in everything that you do you related some jiu-jitsu into maybe to stand up for yourself or answer someone or pursue to create an art what jiu-jitsu in general inspire you or create shake it up a little bit in your personal life did you understand my question yeah but i don't even know if i have words for it because it uh, you know i remember uh, i think it was when i got my third stripe or fourth stripe when uh i had to speak and um you know i i, I think jujitsu and when you get your black belt all these things I remember saying, like, it just becomes a part of you. Um, and it's not something over here anymore, but it just becomes part of you. And I know you use that tagline, you know, I live jujitsu. And it just becomes such a part of your life, whether, you know, it was a time in life where I was teaching full time jujitsu or even I'm doing other things, but it becomes just a part of you, even when you're not on the mat. And, you know, it's just such a metaphor for everything. You know, you can always relate it back to jujitsu or from jujitsu, you can relate that to your life and try to figure out, okay, how do I deal with a situation? And it's like, what would I do in jujitsu or the other way around? You know, I like, again, it, it just becomes, I think, integrated into your being and it. Yeah. Just pollutes your mind. I, I, <laughs> no, I, because I remember you know, it's interesting that you answer it that way because you reach this pinnacle and you accomplish all this stuff. And then, then for a while you, you kind of took leave. You, you left the school for a little while. I mean, it was just more like life kind of pulled you in a different direction. I remember that. And you weren't here for a while. And then you came back and there was like a whole nother generation of people here, a bunch of female students. And everyone's just like, is that who I think it is? I'm like, yeah, that's Felicia. And and they would ask, like, what's she doing here? And I'm like, she found her way home. Mm. And I remember you and I talked about that at length yeah. when you came back. It was like life just pulled you back here. You know, yeah. it, it could have, I mean, I know this is our home, but jujitsu pulled you back. Yeah. It's, I think that's why in our climate today, I mean, everybody keeps talking about it, you know, all the, the health stuff aside, 
the emotional, the mental, this, it's, it's just, we're all the same. If I don't, if I don't put, I tell people this, if somebody's injured, cause I learned this from John Jock, somebody's injured. They're like, I can't come in and train. I can't do it. I'm going crazy. I go, you know what you do? Go home, put your gi on, go put your gi on, sit on your carpet, whatever. If you have space, just that act alone will bring you peace. Mm. And it's just interesting that your whole journey, it was like this circle yeah. and it brought you home. You know, and which I think is amazing because again, it's another, it's another extension of that cycle, that, that way that we try to teach here that when you, when you start to learn this, it doesn't leave you, it ingrains inside you. And another example where you, you found your way back. Yeah. you know, I think I took, yeah, I think you always keep coming back. And just like with life, you know, you have a problem and you go and you have other experiences and they help you to grow. And then when you come back, you have this whole other well of experience to to, to go yeah, back absolutely, to. Absolutely. And, and I, you know, I went and I learned a bunch of things in the world. I learned a lot about, I taught a lot. I did a lot of different things. And then that fills out who I am. And then that lets me bring that back here. Um, and, you know, I, I loved coming back and being part of the peanut gallery, you know, and, uh, you know, I was at a place where I was, had to be a little bit more responsible and in a, in a situation and, and coming back home, it's like not, uh, you know, there are a lot of people that were here. There are a lot of people that are new that never knew me before, but yet it was still home. You know, it was just very weird. It was just like, there's not that many people there that were there from, that are still training mm-hmm. or, you know, maybe they've gone off and done their own things, but yet it was still home and it was in a new space, but yet it was still home. And, um, it's just been it, awesome. You know, It's like no matter once you get involved with Jiu Jitsu for that long time that you, that you did, it's like when you left your home never left you. Mm-hmm. You understand? You can go anywhere in the world. Your home will never leave you. And it's always, a, in a way, a safe place to be back and that environment that was create. And I want to ask you, too, is how in that... I want to talk about the other side of Felicia that I don't know if a lot of people know, that very incredible artistic side. Because you have your own company. Flo. Which, flow that she does whatever i don't know people approach you and you have your own creation you have requests from people you do commission work right Mm -hmm. did this logo for roll forever and that's incredible is and i was intrigued to me is how because people that are linked to art to me is they see things different than the way i see i look at to some whatever it is and an artistic person goes like wow look at this shape and look at this like how did you get inspired look you you did such an amazing frame here how how that come up on your brain and how do you see that it, uh, you know i um went to school and got a master's degree in fine art years ago at ucla and after that experience i pretty much stopped making art and i got into graphics and and post in hollywood and then as I was in there and I was teaching is when I started finding it, you know, coming into jujitsu. And I remember uh, when I was a blue belt, I had just gotten my blue belt, I think. And I rem- and, and jujitsu hadn't integrated and taken over my life yet at that point. And I remember feeling really lost. And um, whatever I've done in my life, I've done like 110%, whether it was art or graphics or jujitsu. And when I can be immersed in those, whatever world it is I'm in, is where I feel most comfortable. And the uncomfortable times are when I'm between worlds. And I was starting to move away from graphics and I was teaching more and then I found jujitsu, but I wasn't yet fully entrenched into jujitsu. And so there was this very uncomfortable time which of course, you know, is always good because it's good for us to be uncomfortable. And so then I, you know, completely immersed into jujitsu 110%. And so then later when I uh, came back to jujitsu, 
it was almost like a reset because of other things in my life. It was kind of taking stock of what was going on and what, what do I want to do? And I don't want to have a life where I have a big, long bucket list. You know, I like that idea of having no bucket list. And that's also kind of who I am. It's like, if I want to do something, I'm going to go do it. It's like, what am I waiting for? And I hear people saying, oh, someday I want to travel here. It's like, well, why aren't you doing it now? Why don't you plan that for your Christmas break or, you know, in a a non-COVID world? Um, And so when I came back to jujitsu, somehow that internal search brought back the art and they came together to influence each other. And, you know, like the... Coming back to jujitsu here, it was like it brought back that connection to what I was doing before. You know, it's like I'd gone out, worked, done all these other things, come back, and they came together. And I, I don't know. You know, you just get immersed in it, and it, it it's the same as jujitsu. And those are jujitsu and art are kind of two things where um, in my life that I've done that I got to a point where I could get lost in it. Like I started, when I was a kid, I did music and I I really didn't have uh, much uh, talent for that. But being from an Asian family, we had to do piano and violin and it was excruciating. When I did art, it was something that I could lose myself in. Jiu-Jitsu in the same way I could lose myself in after you know, with all these things, you have to learn before you can disappear into yeah, yeah, it, yeah. right? It has to become part of you. And then when those two things came together, it was like, you know, I had a studio and working and just being so immersed in these two things where I can disappear into was amazing. And I, you know, I just was like, I got to get back to go and do, make the art and take this chance and get the studio and do it and see what happens. Did that answer? I don't know. <laughs> yes, you did. I have uh, two easy questions for you. The first one is, what jiu-jitsu means to you? Wow. You know, I was thinking about this question. And I, I, again, I, I don't even have the words. I think... I don't know. It's just is such a part of me and life. Okay, let's make it easy for you. <laughs> this is part of you. Who is Felicia? <laughs> I know he always asks that question. <laughs> I know it's my trademark. I'm yeah. going to ask every single person that's sitting in that chair because I want to hear from you who you are on your own words. Um. I think I'm just a regular person that likes to get, you know, find things that I get drawn to, you know, I don't know, like, I don't use the word passion because it seems too literal, but things I just seem to get sucked into that start to grow and it's not really a conscious thing. It just becomes something that takes up more and more of my time and, you know, opportunities come up in life and you take them and you know you I don't know what was the question who am I you know I just live and not in a foolhardy way but you become aware of especially now like how much time we have and what we want to do and you don't put off all these things for a day that never comes and you just live and make the most of it and take the opportunities when things go bad you go okay what can I do to make this better same as jujitsu you know things go bad and you go okay how can I turn this around and make an escape and and turn it to attack I think it can help you a little bit to extend that answer towards you knowing you for quite some time as you can see you can hear she's a very humble person but definitely she became one of the biggest name in the sports of jujitsu here in America she's the I guess the when they say number six is the six black belt, right? The female oh. black belt we have. Oh. Today we're talking about thousands. She was the number six. Um, through her life experience, she brought into jujitsu a lot of her artistic skills that maybe she doesn't see it, but 
I have the privilege to see her development. She creates her own game, like in Jiu-Jitsu we do. She threw a lot of the flavors of things that she does from wrestling background, for what she sees, how she sees the technique. And I think to me is when I see a student of mine be able to, like many of them, but in specific you because you are, I only have two female black belts, but you are the only one that currently continue to train. You became an inspiration for all of the students in my school. You became an inspiration not only for the female athletes over there, you became an inspiration for every single person that practiced jiu-jitsu. And here in the school, we see in the eyes of the girls that just start training, when they see you, they look up to you so much. And I think uh, maybe you not realizing how much impact you have in so many people's life, you know? A lot of people here, they are, their jiu-jitsu, they base on what you do, how you do, you know, and um, I think I just saw that whole process from the beginning until today and continue to do so, and it's incredible. I think I, I'm the one that feels privileged to be able to see so many of the students accomplish so much because I don't think you thought that start training jiu-jitsu a few years later will become part of your life and, and make you grow more than you could ever imagine. And it's a constantly growth on you. And I know a lot of the things that you're doing in your personal life right now that helping a lot of the people. Um, but, if, I, but I also have to say it, a large part of that is the environment that you pr provided for that to happen. But now you continue now on our side to make that environment as healthy, as successful, because anybody that comes in has all the influence from you guys. They became the leading people in the school too. Um, I remember also that you told me something that you were doing, how do I say, and uh, you have a lot of people that come up to you for support, like, how can I say, that you're doing to some of the girls that contact you, they, they're not feeling good at their lives, and you start... Mentoring, you yeah, mentor a lot. Yes. You still do that, Felicia? Sure. Yes. <laughs> and I, know, I, know, I know because you Some mentioned. of the guys do. <laughs> I know, yeah. and, and it's really important because you have your moment that wasn't feeling who you were. Yeah. And now, after all these years, you're in a position now that you're helping others to become feeling better and become successful in their lives. And that's something that I always want to tell you that you're not just what you just said. It's a lot more that you accomplish. And uh, I just thank you for being around for all this time in our school and continue to do so. Uh, I want to make sure that people can reach out, especially on classes, seminars, because you you. You do so many things at once. Also with that project that you have with the art that you do, incredible. I think people should check that out too. She's now a combination of her styles of art with the style of Jiu-Jitsu and together became Felicia O. <laughs> Very nice. Um, Anything else you'd like to say out there, Felicia? Because I know a lot of people that will be listening to this and they already know who you are and they look up for you so much. And I'm just asking you to continue your journey, inspire so many people out yeah, there. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. What, what, would, be, what would be your advice to a, to a female student entering, wanting to train, wanting to go to a school, expectation, what, what, what's the best advice you could give, give somebody like that? I mean, this goes across the board, but especially for female students. Yeah. I mean, I think you have to find the right school, the right fit for you. Um, I, I know when I came in, if it was a very casual atmosphere in the sense it like to me coming in, it felt more like a pickup game of basketball as opposed to a more traditional martial art where you were standing in rows in lines and counting numbers. And for me, that was really appealing. And now we're in a time where there's so many schools. So I think you really have 
an opportunity to find the right one for who you are, depending on your goals or your age and things like that. And once you find the right place, I think you just keep showing up as as cliche as that sounds, you show up and and you take an active part in your learning. You don't expect it to be spoon fed to you or dumped on you. You have to be a participant. So you have to pay attention. You have to ask questions. You have to pay attention to what's going on. And so, you know, like with everything in life, you have to take some responsibility for it. And that I think really helps move everything forward. You know, you don't just go and not pay attention to what's going on. Very nice. Thank you, Felicia, for stopping by and uh, give us a small portion of your history. We're going to have many more times you coming back here because a lot of the things to be asked. But once again, thank you. It was great to have you here. And uh, all the girls out there, if you check her out, because you will see and incredible things that she did and continue to do so in the arts and in jiu-jitsu. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.